This is a complete skinning guide for Dragonfly. Today we're going to cover loads after I've done hours and hours of skinning testing on the beta. We will have a look at all the different skinning materials that you can get in the Dragon Hours because we do have several special materials that we could be farming in addition to the standard stuff that we usually get in any WoW expansion. Resilient Leather and Adamant Scales are the two basic skinning materials on the Dragon Isles and every mob will drop one or the other. You tend to get Adamant Scales from the more armoured mobs like Basilisks or Thunder Lizards but to be honest it seems so random at times what they actually do drop. Both of these have a rare drop hide that you will occasionally get just while farming them. If you're farming Resilient Leather then you'll get Dense Hide and if you're skinning Adamant Scales then you've got a chance of getting Lustrous Scaled Hide. Now all the materials we talked about so far come in three different qualities one, two, or three. The quality level of what you get when you skin a mob is based on your skill, which is a calculation taking into account your profession skill level, your profession gear, and your specializations. When you start out, everything you skin will be quality one, but by the time you've maxed out your skinning skill, which doesn't take long at all, picked up some profession gear, and spent some skinning knowledge points, you'll be getting mostly quality two already. To get rank three quality skinning materials, then you do need to specialize quite deeply in a certain specialization tree. Whilst we're talking about quality, we can just have a look at the eight skinning materials that only come from certain mobs within the Dragon Isles. We have Fire Infused Hide, Keiko Thunder Scales, Pristine Vorqueen Horns, Windsong Plumage, Rockfang Leather, Flawless Proto Dragon Scales, Salamantha Scales, and Crystal Spine Fur. None of these have a quality rank. If you get one of them, it's the same as everyone else's. I have found what I think is the best farming locations for all of these in my time testing out skinning on the beta, and I'm going to show you all of those farming locations at the end of the video. Gathering Professions in Dragonflight have three secondary stats, Finesse, Deafness and Perception. The higher your Finesse is, the higher the percentage chance you get for a proc. When this does happen, it clearly shows it in the log, and you get a pile of extra Resilient Leather or Adamant Scales depending on what you are skinning. This only applies to the Resilient Leather and Adamant Scales, it does not give you bonuses for anything else. Deafness simply increases skinning speed. Nothing special here, just the higher it is, the faster you're going to skin a mob. Finally, we have Perception, which increases the chance of rare materials dropping while skinning. This one does not show up as a proc. You basically just get the Perception percentage added to your base drop rate of material, so it's difficult to know for sure what it's actually affecting. I spent hours and hours skinning on a beta, but no one person could gather enough data to be 100% sure. I do, however, think it's reasonable to assume that it affects the drop rate of hides, and all the other materials that only come from certain creatures because both of these have perception in their talent trees which would be absolutely useless otherwise. We have three slots for skinning profession gear in Dragonfly, a skinner's cap, a pack and a skinner's knife. As a note here, if you have nothing else and you are carrying a basic white skinning knife, you can equip this for a skill bonus straight away. This gear mostly gives bonuses to secretary stats but it can also give profession skill level which can take you over the cap and provide the full benefit from this. Your first priority should be just to get anything in the slots, just so you have some sort of bonus. There should be loads of the basic skinning gear on the auction house that you should be able to pick up cheap, as anyone levelling up any profession will be wanting to craft those for the first time bonuses to get from doing it. When you are a little bit more established with your skinning, you will want to be aiming for a higher quality profession gear to get higher bonuses as well as aiming for the best stats for your spec. We also have one new consumable for skinning in Dragonflight, that is the Primal Razor Stone, which increases your finesse for 2 hours. Skinning is the easiest profession in Dragonflight to max out to 100 skill. It is really easy, just run around, kill stuff, skin it, rinse and repeat, and you'll probably be capped in about an hour or so. Once you get to skill level 25, you'll start unlocking the specialization system. At level 25, you can only unlock one specialization tree, but as you level up more, you will be able to unlock the other two. So you should have all three of these unlocked really early in Dragonfly because it's not hard to get to 100 skill like we said. These talent trees are a progression system for skinning in Dragonfly. Getting skin to 100 is essential, but it's quick and it's easy, so it's not an issue. What we really need to concentrate on is getting as many Dragon Isles skinning knowledge points as possible. There are some one-off sources of these knowledge points, but they are universal across most professions and probably warrant a video by themselves. We're going to look at the repeatable sources of skinning knowledge and this will be how you get the majority of your skinning profession progression on your character in Dragonfly. First, we have a regular quest from the skinning trainer in Valdraken. I have done various versions of this quest, and every time it's just been to deliver some sort of basic skinning materials. Just a note here about these sorts of quests in Dragonfly, where you have to hand in these materials that have a quality level on them. They always have to be at least rank 2, or the quest giver just won't accept them. You can't just palm off your crap on the quest giver. 
on the beta this felt like a weekly quest but do check in with your train in Valdraken every now and again because until Dragonfly actually launches we have no idea how often this is going to spawn. Curious Hides are a bonus drop that you get from when you skin anything and you simply right click on it to destroy it and it will give you one skin and knowledge point. You can get five of these a week and you can track your weekly progress by opening your skinning journal and clicking on the Curious Hide at the side. As a bonus the last sample you get every week is an epic variant that will give you two skin and knowledge points. I have collected all the Curious Hides quite a few times on the beta and I've never felt like it's taken more than an hour of skinning to reach my weekly cap. Saturated bones were also added late in the beta and it's another drop that you can get from skinning that's going to give you one knowledge point. There is likely a cap on how many of these you can pick up weekly as well but this doesn't show in the tool tip at the moment. Okay so we have some skinning knowledge or talent points if you want to call on that, how are we going to spend them? I'm going to go through all the spec trees in turn and point out areas that I think are important to know. Additionally we can talk about any potential specs that we could use when Dragonflight releases as well. The first tree we have on the far left is Tannin and this is primarily geared towards improving the quality of what you skin. Every one of these circular nodes on every talent tree in Dragonflight has a stacking passive bonus that increases for every point you put into it. For example in Tannin it says here, improve your general skinning, gain plus one skill while skinning per point in this specialization. So if I allocated 40 points here, that would give me plus 40 skill while skinning. You have one base skill per level in your profession. So at profession level 100, we have basic 100 skill. Adding 40 to this is a big boost towards skinning higher quality materials. Every five points we put into this, there are further bonuses that we pick up as well. You can see on Tannin that at 10 and 25 points, we gain the ability to unlock a sub-specialization. We get to choose to unlock one of the nodes below this one, they have their own passive bonuses and it doesn't cost anything to unlock one of them so it's well worth doing as soon as you can. We can also see that you can unlock the ability to refine and upgrade hides through the tanning specialisations. When refining and upgrading skins for either leather, scales or hide you need 5 rank 1s to make a rank 2, 5 rank 2s to make a rank 3 or 25 rank 1s to make a rank 3. This makes you realise why it's not a terrible idea to push your skill up as high as you can because if you can improve the average quality of what you're skinning by one then you're effectively gaining five times more loot. Below tanning we have leather and scale sub-specialisations. If we look at the passive on these they give you plus one skill per point allocated but this time it's not to all skinning only when skinning mobs that drop either leather or scales. Now it would be a good question for you to ask at this point why would I ever spend points in leather or scale specialization when I can get plus one skill per point in tanning and that doesn't have the limitation of only working on certain mobs. There are two reasons why you may want to come down to leather or scale specialization as soon as you can rather than carrying on putting points in tanning. Tanning has less bonuses on it because at rank 10 and rank 25 its bonus is that you get to unlock one of the sub specializations below it. Now this does unlock a new passive bonus for you but as much as if you'd have just given your stats instead. The most impactful reason that you could want to get down to scale or leather mastery is simply because the bonuses you get every five levels are so much bigger than in Tannin. With Tannin maxed, you get a total of 30 secondary stats from the bonuses that you get every five levels. With leather or scale mastery, you get 60 secondary stats, so twice as many. In addition to all the secondary stats, leather and scale mastery also get a bonus plus 20 skill when they skin the mobs that they are specialized with. To sum it up, if we specialise more, we are narrowing the bonus we get, but the bonus we do get is bigger. Now we are going to talk about a few specs, but I'm only going to cover around the first 50 points or so, because that's where people tend to need the most guidance. Spec-wise, if we put 40 points into tanning, we get a good, solid, quality bonus on everything we skin, whatever it is. We also get the ability to refine hides all the way to rank 3 quality. This is probably the safest build that we could go for in skinning in Dragonfly full stop. I said 50 points, so let's put 10 points into leather specialization and see how that looks then. Leather skinning has a primary region difficulty of 90. We have 155 skill, 3% finesse, 4% deafness, 1% perception. If we go straight for leather specialization, we lose the ability to refine hides, but we gain the ability to refine leather all the way to rank 3. Spending the same 50 knowledge points that we did last time, but this time going straight for leather specialization. We have 170 skill. 3% finesse, 7% deafness, 2% perception. I have put the stats for non-specialized tanning build next to it. Now going straight for this level specialization means that you are terrible at skinning anything that drops scales. I don't however think that is so much of an issue with skinning. 
Skinning, unlike herping and mining, can choose what it wants to farm quite easily. If you're rubbish at skinning scales, just don't farm mobs that drop scales. Now with two materials, scales and leather, one of them is going to end up being worth less than the other and you never know how it's going to play out. Basically, we have two builds here. We can play it safe and push tan in, or we can specialise and take a risk. Limit what we can farm, but we can farm better what we do farm. I'm not saying either one is better, but those are the two most basic skinning builds in Dragonfly. Next, we're going to jump to Bait Crafter. Bait Craft unlocks the ability to craft elusive creature bait. You can use these to summon a mob to kill, but at this point, it really doesn't drop much. Elusive creature bait is on a 12 hour cooldown, but this is reduced every time you skin a mob. Bait Crafter has a passive bonus finesse, which is going to boost the basic materials that we get when skinning for every point we allocate here. The final point in this specialization makes it so that when you skin elites or rares, you get more cooldown reduction on your elusive creature bait. This is fairly useless on its own, but it does synergize well with the mastery sub-specialization that we're going to look at next. The most interesting thing in this bait crafter tree is probably a 20 point talent allowing us to craft bottled pheromones. This is a useful item that gives you a huge AOE pull, but unfortunately I was really disappointed to see that it had a 30 minute cooldown. Mastery tree next and our passive here increases deafness which speeds up our skinning speed at every point here. In this specialization we see loads of increased cooldown reduction on our elusive creature bait when we skin a mob. At 20 points, the elusive creature bait can now spawn an elite, so that is where our synergy comes from with the 40 point talent in bait crafting. The last point in mastery says your elusive creature bait can now draw in rare creatures at certain locations who can be skinned for a chance at the best rewards. On the beta, I did not get to test the elites or the 40 point talent here as we had to manually do all the dailies etc to level this up, so I can't really say how good this build is. The idea seems solid though, basically we are spam skinning to reduce the cooldown on the elites that we want to just keep spawning for decent rewards. Elemental infusion is next and I did try a few different things with this one on the beta. This is making it so that we can craft elemental versions of the elusive creature bait. These do however all share a 12 hour cooldown. Your passive here is perception increasing the drop rate on rare materials. Once again we have loads of cooldown reduction on the elusive creature bait in this sub specialization every time we skin a mob. I can't actually wait to see what people can get the 12 hour cooldown to when they have everything in this trees maxed out. Even when I was playing with around 30 knowledge points in total, the cooldown didn't seem too bad. The elemental version of the creature bait does require some rousing elementals to craft it, but you always make a profit when you loot them up. I have a feeling this tree could potentially be a solid pick. It's mostly because of the 40 point talent, which is a titan version that will drop rousing order. Rousing order are rare, no mobs drop them and there are barely any ways to reliably farm them. They are also in a huge number of Dragonflight crafts. When you have something that's rare and in demand, the price tends to get a bit crazy. Originally, this was going to be my go-to spec with skinning because the idea was that you'd be able to get five people in a group with elemental infusion maxed out, then all of them would be constantly spawning the mobs that drop the rousing order that everyone could loot. Unfortunately, I did test this on the beta and party members don't get the rousings drop, they only get the standard grey trash that the mob drops. I still think this is a solid enough spec. The rousings you get before order are not too bad either, it's just that the rousing order is just such a tasty reward. Next up we have the harvesting tree and our main specialization has a passive of plus one deafness per point, so passively increasing our skinning speed. This one is full of the usual secondary stats, some bonus damage to beast and dragon king is nice, but nothing that's worth worrying about. The final point in harvesting is probably the most interesting one as it unlocks the ability for curious shaped stomachs to drop for you when you are skinning mobs. It's basically a passive bonus for some extra loot whilst you are skinning and you can get grey items, meat, fish or oddly enough enchanting materials from it. I have not heard of anyone getting an epic enchanting crystal from this on the beta. I think this build is fine but I do think there are better ones elsewhere. Lure Crafter gives us a chance to find more souls while skinning mobs in the Dragon Isles and the drop chance increases for every point we put in here. These morsels are crafting regions for making fishing lures that we unlock as we progress through here. Now fish are going to be valuable in Dragonflight, this I'm sure of, as all the best food buffs have them. What I don't know is how good lures are going to be, simply because a huge amount of progression with fishing is locked behind the Tuscar reputation and is largely untested. The lures could be useless or they could be a gold mine. I do think the lure you get for maxing out the tree will be quite valuable as it helps you get the uncommon fish which is used in loads of the top food buffs. Someone somewhere is going to make great things happen with this spec but I do think the majority of players can skip this one over. 
Meat Carver is our next sub specialization, which gives us the chance to get meat as bonus loot every time we skin a mob. The passive gives us an increased chance to get meat for every knowledge point allocated. I tried this spec out late on in the beta and I could not get it to work. I could not get meat from anything, whatever I tried to skin. Additionally, the main problem I have with this specialization is that in Dragonflight, all the best food buffs come from fish. Meat is fairly common in WoW and any time that we've had meat that did not provide a best in slot buff, it basically became vendor trash very quickly. So unless you can somehow get fish from this specialization or they actually drop something unique, I think you can pretty much avoid this one. Trophy Collector is a build I found interesting. Our passive here is plus one perception per point, increasing our chances of getting rare drops. This is a build designed for farming the materials that only drop from certain mobs within the Dragon Isles. On most builds you can go for whatever secondary stats you want, but here you need to be stacking perception on all of your profession gear that you can. This could also potentially be an end game pick for players who have maxed out everything they want in the tanning tree and can get rank 3 drops all the time and just want to come here for the massive amounts of passive perception in the tree just to increase the drop rate on the hides they get. Your skinning skill isn't so much of an issue on this sub specialization as all these materials are dropped from certain creatures don't have a rank so you don't have to worry about what you're producing. These special creature materials can drop for any skinner and they are not as widely used in crafting as basic levers etc. This means they are more volatile to oversupply, so if someone comes up with a super group farm on one of these early in Dragonflight, it could kill off the material market for that one for good. There are 8 of these though, so not all of them can crash surely, and like with the Rousing Order skinning farm, I think this one could be a reasonable pick too. Right, I promise you farming locations for those 8 materials that only drop from certain creatures. We will get to those, but please let me know what spec you're thinking about doing with your skinning in Dragonflight in the comments below. All those comments and likes really push the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the video out. I don't want it to flop, as it really discourages me from doing this sort of content in the future. Anyway, to farming. Firstly, we are farming some Keiko Thunder Scales. These come from, surprisingly, Thunder Lizards. There are Thunder Lizards all over the Dragon Isles, but I found the best concentrations are within the Inaran Plains, especially around the middle. As a bonus, this is a high traffic area, so it's not unusual to see piles of Thunder Lizard corpses everywhere for some freebie skinning. Next, we're after some pristine Vorquin homes. These drop from Vorquin, that is the colourful horse type things with horns that are spread all over the Dragon Isles. There are quite a few places that you can farm these effectively, but I think the location just southeast of Valdraken is the best. You can also get quite a lot of these near Camp Nowhere in the southeast of Azor Span. Windsong plumage drop from the birds that are all around the same location that we were just farming the pristine Vorquin horns. Whenever you go to farm these things, they have a really annoying habit of being really high in the sky. It was annoying as a hunter and I have no idea how a melee is going to cope on farming these. Flawless Proto-Drake scales, unsurprisingly enough, come from Proto-Drakes. You can find endless amounts of these in the North East Awakened Shore, right near where you first come onto Dragon Isles. I have no idea why these ones are marked as rare. They don't seem any rarer than any of the others. This one is a high traffic area, so once again, you can pick up some free corpses for skinning. Rockfang Leather comes from Prowlers, who have this amazing new model in Dragonflight. You do see the odd spawn of these all over the Dragon Isles, but by far the highest concentration of them is located in the woods near where the river crosses in the Inaran Plains. The big Prowlers have quite a large life pool and hit like a truck, so just try and ninja kill the smaller ones, especially while you're weak at the start of the expansion. Salamantha scales drop from lizard mobs all over the Dragon Isles. We have two locations, one in the northern part of the Inaran Plains, and one is in the northeast corner of Wakenshaw. There are a few mobs at both locations, but not enough for you to just farm these, but there are plenty of other mobs nearby that you can farm. There is a third location near Valdraken that is better, but it doesn't seem to drop the Salamantha scales. I think this is potentially bugged on the beta and will be fixed for live, but I don't know for sure, so I'm not going to include it here. Crystal Spine Fur drops from Porcupine mobs. Like with a lot of these sort of mobs, you see them sparsely scattered everywhere in Dragonfly. We do however get the best concentration of them to farm around Camp Nowhere in the southeast of Azure Spam. You will have to move about a bit on this farm as they are still scattered about a little bit but like I said this is the highest concentration you're going to get on the Dragon Isles. Finally we have fire infused hides that drop from the mammoths within the lava pools in the north part of the Waking Shore. These are a pain in the ass to farm, there's lava and annoying mobs all over the place that you don't want to pull. You need to be constantly flying between spawns and mobs and some of the mammoths have silly amount of life. If you're farming materials to sell, then maybe this one should be the lowest on your priority list. So that's it. That's the eight special materials that you only get from certain mobs and the best places to get them. 
I do also have some fantastic farming locations for adamant scales and resilient leather, but they're going in the videos on their own. So if you want those, you'll have to subscribe and watch those when they come up. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.